Welcome to The Terrible Take, a daily segment telling Steelers Nation what's on our mind. Hi, I'm Melanie Friedlander, and welcome to my Terrible Take, coming at you every Sunday, courtesy of Steelers Depot. I know you don't want to hear any more about COVID, and I'm just as tired of talking about it as all of you probably are. But there was some big news in the NFL this week regarding the virus. And I'm not talking about the outbreaks that ripped through the Browns, the Rams, and the Washington football team. Or about how the league ridiculously claimed they were postponing those games a day or two for, quote, medical reasons, when it was clearly just to allow the teams to get some of their players back. Or how that move gave a competitive disadvantage to the opponents of those three teams, much in the way the Steelers got negatively impacted last year. We can rant about those issues on Twitter, and I have, but the league will always make decisions that best serve the revenue stream and are pointing it out won't change anything. No, the news I want to discuss today is the updates to the NFL COVID-19 policies. Yesterday, the NFL and the NFLPA issued a joint statement as follows. The NFL and the NFLPA have been engaged with our medical advisors to address the emergence of the new Omicron variant and how to stop the spread to ensure we keep everyone safe and complete the remainder of the season responsibly. The intensive protocols implemented last week and the rescheduling of three games were designed to stop the transmission of the virus and play this week's game safely. After this weekend's games, we have agreed to put into place a new set of protocols, which will include a more targeted testing plan, more flexibility for players to attend meetings virtually, and also a high-risk player opt-out for the remainder of the season. Okay, so what does all this mean? Here are the significant changes. Vaccinated players and staff will not have to undergo weekly testing anymore. Instead, they will be chosen for targeted testing depending on the presence of symptoms, a high-risk contact, or position group depending on the team's status. This means that asymptomatic vaccinated players may not be identified if they have COVID, so they won't have to miss practice or games. The return to participation requirements were also modified, creating multiple pathways for players to come off the reserve COVID-19 list faster and avoid missing games. Players considered to be high risk for significant illness if they were to get COVID based on their medical history can now choose to opt out for the rest of the season by Monday. Any player who does so will forfeit their compensation, i.e. their weekly paycheck, for the remainder of the season. Booster shots are not required for players to retain their status as fully vaccinated, but the league is encouraging players to get a booster. Players can choose to attend meetings virtually or in person wearing a mask. Activity outside the club facility was also restricted just through the end of the Week 15 games, including dining out when playing on the road, gathering in groups of more than four people, public appearances, big clubs, and parties. Exceptions for certain situations where players still or staff wore a mask. What hasn't changed is that unvaccinated players will continue to be tested daily. It will be interesting to see how this unfolds in the coming weeks. We know that the Omicron variant is at least two to three times more contagious than Delta, but also seems to result in a less severe COVID infection. Over 150 players, 6% of the league, were placed on the reserve COVID-19 list in the past week, and roughly two-thirds of the players who tested positive were asymptomatic. The league has made a significant financial investment in technology, such as genomic testing, which allows them to track the specific strains, so they know a lot more than we do. This gives them a sophisticated understanding of how each outbreak starts and spreads. The league plans to continually evaluate the situation and may make additional changes at the end of the week based on the results of these changes. Hopefully, this will serve to identify and isolate players with real infection without limiting players who aren't a risk. We'll have to wait and see. Thanks for listening to my take. You can follow me on Twitter at Girl Surgeon. Be sure to follow us at SteelersDepot.com and check out episodes of The Terrible Take every day at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And check out The Terrible Podcast with myself and Alex Kazora every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.